Meet the Candidates Forum. What follows is the third of three segments of the 2017 Hackensack Council Candidate Forum hosted on April 30th at Mount Olive Church by the Bergen County NAACP and videotaped by Bergen Grassroots Incorporated in the interest of better informing Hackensack voters of their choices in the Tuesday, May 9, 2017 municipal election. In this May 9 Hackensack municipal election, there are three five-candidate slates, or 15 total candidates. Those three slates of five candidates will appear on the city's municipal ballot in three columns. Hackensack voters may vote for a total of any five candidates from among those 15 candidates. The forum was introduced by Bergen NAACP President Anthony Curitan. The forum was moderated by former Ridgewood Mayor Paul Aronson. Each segment began with 15-minute intros of Slate members followed by audience questions written out and delivered by the moderator. On the ballot, the Hackensack United for Progress slate is in column one. The LaBrasse team slate is in column two. The Hackensack Strong slate is in column three. However, because the Hackensack United for Progress slate appeared third in the candidate forum, this third video forum segment records the Hackensack United for Progress slate, its presentations and discussions. Hackensack United for Progress slate members are, as you will see, the, see their names on this image. Hey folks, welcome back to round three. Thank you for sticking it us out. Uh, this is important, very important, uh, particularly for the residents of Hackensack. So I'm glad you're all here. Uh, I'm just going to go through the format once again, and then I'm going to turn the floor over to our candidates. Uh, we're going to have about 40 or 45 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to spend the first 15 minutes uh, for you just to go around, maybe spend two or three minutes each, telling a little bit about yourself, your vision for the city, uh, some of your ideas. And then we're going to open it up to the questions from the audience. We have a bunch of questions that we've already received. If anybody has an additional one, we'll try to work them in. Uh, again, we want this to be a conversation. Uh, we see this as an opportunity for you to share your vision of the, of the city and for all of us here to ask questions and get a better sense of who you are and what you want to do. So with that, I'm going to ask you to turn on the microphone right there. I'm going to mute button. And uh, introduce yourself and take it away. I'm Laura Rodriguez, and I am a mother of a third grade student, Nellie K. Parker. I'm a wife, and we've lived in Hackensack for 22 years. I'm currently the vice president of the school board, and my day job, I work at the county of Bergen. And the reason that I'm running for city council is primarily because I want to see an increased dialogue between the city and the schools and that is my primary interest and I'm going to hand the mic over to Jason. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Soam. I'm currently the president of Soam's Uniforms located on Main Street in Hackensack. I sit as a director on the Main Street Business Alliance. I was born and raised in this community. I see a former teacher out on the ground. <laughs> but I have to punch out. <laughs> um, you know, my, my family has gone back generations in the city. My grandfather was a fireman, my great grandfather was a fireman. On the other side of my family, across the street from where Soames currently sits now, my grandfather had a fruit business that he sold fruit and vegetables. And um, as, as I see how we're proceeding as a city, and I look at the large hole in the street and some of the issues financially, I, I truly believe if the new group came in, we could do a better job. I think our group will do a better job, and that's why I'm running. Thank you. I'm now going to turn the mic over to Carlos Marino. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so my name is Carlos Ivan Marino. I'm uh, running for the Hackensack City Council. And what I can tell you about myself is that uh, I was uh, born in Ridgewood, but raised here in Hackensack all my life. I, had, I lived on Clinton Place, and um, then I, I ended up moving over onto 23 Diet Place, and uh, that's where I currently live. And I 
pretty much most of my life, I, I mean, if you were to tell me that I was going to be here at this moment doing this, I never would have thought that. Uh, I originally worked in TV and radio in New York City, and I did that for about seven years. And then when I took a job uh, here in uh, New Jersey, uh, I kind of fell in love with local government. I looked at it and I, you know, just the idea of being able to talk to your fellow neighbor and trying to find ways to, you know, find solutions to problems. That's something that really got me. And uh, I was very fortunate for uh, five years. I worked for Assemblyman Tim Eustace in the 37th, le uh, I'm sorry, 38th Legislative District. I was his Deputy Chief of Staff and I did communications work. So I did a lot of stuff with local municipalities. Uh, did some work with uh, county officials and even at times worked with uh, people at the federal level and it was a great opportunity because it allowed me to you know interact with people at the you know local level people from the 13 different municipalities and um, given this opportunity to run for Hackensack City Council I want to bring that experience that I've had and go to work you know I've been going door to door talking to people and if given the opportunity to represent, you know, the city of Hackensack and, and the people here, uh, I want to go back to every one of those homes and tell them, put me to work, you know, let's find ways to bring this city back up to, you know, what it used to be. Because there was times when people would say that Main Street was such a great place and, and I want to do that. I want to try and bring it back. And as Jason said, I feel that this team that I'm a part of, we can do great things. And uh, I'm going to pass the mic over to uh, Mike. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, most of you here knows who I am. Uh, um, my name is Michael Williams, uh, lifelong resident of Hackensack. Went through the public school system. Uh, played here, worked here, uh, most of my adult life. Um, I am a, uh, a retired police officer, spending my last uh, nine years or so in a as a detective sergeant in the juvenile division and the uh, community policing unit with Hackensack. I am a uh, ordained deacon uh, of Mount, Al Mount Zion, I'm sorry, Brother Jackson, <laughs> Mount Zion Baptist Church. Bring your time. <laughs> <laughs> as far as today's concerned, done. <laughs> and uh, uh, being an ordained deacon, I am um, a co chairman of the deacon board and chairman of the trustee board at Mount Zion. Um, I'm also a uh, uh, first vice, vice president on the board of uh, directors for the uh, Lodi Hackensack Boys and Girls Club. Um, one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to run, even though over the past several years, uh, people have been um, trying to uh, get me to throw my head in, as they say, um, I decided to do it this time because um, being a retired police officer, um, after spending it, it almost 30 years in that field, I, I saw a lot of things going on in the city. Um, most recently, the, uh, the, uh, the, the way this current council treats our city employees. And because they're not treating them fair, it causes lawsuits. The lawsuits affects your tax dollar because they're going to win, okay? It's usually a violation of uh, civil rights, uh, something that was, wasn't fair as far as their contract was concerned. But at, either way, when you go to court, the judgment's usually for the uh, plaintiff. And when that happens, the city has to uh, uh, pay up, and that affects your tax dollar. And it's, that's not right. We all know taxes are high as it is. Um, it, and it's tough to bring it down. You have the federal government and the uh, state government cutting uh, budgets, cutting uh, um, uh, what we're going to look for, help you all, cutting uh, budgets on services, funding, and whatnot. And we have to make up for that because a lot of these things we need. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, not too long ago, I heard that the federal government is uh, cutting the budget for after school care. Um, that's not good because if you don't have after school care, people can't go to work, all right? And that affects us all. So that's one of the reasons uh, why I want to uh, run, why I want to win, and why I believe that this slate here, my teammates and I, 
can do a better job than uh, that, that's being done. Um, I can go on, but I'm not. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a lot I can say about this. Um, we've, we've discussed it. Um, we have some great ideas. And um, again, those of you that, that know me would know that if I didn't trust my teammates, I wouldn't be here. Trust me. All right? Once again, thank you very much. I have, hope everybody have a blessed day. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Romy Bidafuco. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm probably going to forget a couple of things, but um, I have lived in Hackensack for 22 years. Yes, my name is Romy Bidafuco. Um, I have two children, 25 and 22. They've been through um, all the Hackensack schools. Um, I have volunteered my time on PTA, um, HEA, uh, Hapada, Crime Stoppers, um, the Teachers Association, uh, the union. I've been a paraeducator for special education children for 16 years. I've volunteered my time. The reason I'm running for city council <coughs> is I want to um, make a difference. I've have volunteered for many, many years. Um, for those of you guys that know me, I do say what I mean, and I I mean what I say. So, um, anything else? Am I, anything else? I can't remember. Look, I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to, you know, say this, that, and the other thing. We all know what the issues are. Um, you know, we have a great team. We actually have become a family. And that's what we want. We want to bring Hackensack back to family, to issues. And I'm not going to sit here and badmouth everybody and say they didn't do this and they didn't do. We all know what the issues are. We all read the paper. We know what's going on. Hackensack is a small city. So, I mean, like I said, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And I've worked with, you know, many people in this room. And you know how I am. So, and that's why I'm running for city council. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for those uh, introductory comments. Again, we have a lot of questions, so I'm going to try to go through them. Uh, in the interest of time, you know, you can all respond to them if you'd like. I'd ask you to keep your answers kind of concise. If, if you don't, you don't all have to, just one or two or three, whatever, I uh, want to respond to them and just move on to the other questions. So with that, the first question we have concerns seniors. And what will you do if elected to enhance the quality of life for seniors living in Hackensack, particularly with respect to housing and activities? Hi. The, um, one of the things that I noticed, I, I was a former councilman in, in, in the city and served with the administration. And one of the things that I noticed was the lack of grants that we received from the county, state, and federal governments. I think, um, personally, as a Hackensack junior football coach, uh, I, I focus more on the kids, but the seniors fall into this category too. I think it's very important to know a city like the state, who's not the same as us, but similar demographically, they, they bring in $6.7 million of grants into their recreation department. And if you ask the city of Hackensack up until recently what they brought in, the answer would be zero. I think that's a big statement, and, and, and with that money, we can provide activities that seniors want with their suggestions. I have a few ideas, and I'm sure everybody that's sitting up at this table has a few ideas, but we want to hear from the community and see what the seniors in our community want. But the only way we can do that is to get the funding to be able to perform. Um, I'm going to hand over to Mike Williams. About, uh, I guess about two years ago maybe, um, I had brought an idea to the uh, Boys and Girls Club, um, a reference to the seniors as far as um, a uh, health program is concerned with the uh, aquatics program, utilizing the aquatics program in Alvoda, at our Alvoda facility in the pool. Uh, ran into a couple of stomach blocks, um, things didn't really jump off, but now if uh, I'm sure I can do more work on it and make it uh, come to fruition, if I can get into office um, to uh, get this, have the seniors, uh, be, be able to have the seniors uh, come to our location, uh, say, work out in the pool, 
work out in the uh, 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 back room and let the insurance pay for it. Again, um, I wasn't in a position to understand or to know what kind of uh, insurance policies you need for that or how you can get around it. But uh, being in an office, I think I could do a little bit more and perhaps even uh, uh, use the HackSec facilities right here. I, I, and I also realized that there was a uh, logistics problem, uh, problem and actually getting the seniors to our lawyer facility. Maybe um, uh, utilizing the HackSec High School pool with our uh, counselors, uh, possibly do something like that there, or maybe even some day up the road, if we have our own community pool perhaps, we could do it there. But anyway, that's uh, some ideas I had uh, for the seniors at this point. Thank you. Affordable housing. What are your thoughts, proposals with respect to affordable housing? And particularly, what will you do to help low-income individuals have that opportunity to own a home? I'll start and then I'll hand off to Jason because I know he's already chomping at the bit. Um, obviously, we need to follow whatever the legislature demands. We need to honor our share of affordable housing as is set forth in law. Um, the one constant in everything we believe in is the fair treatment of everyone in our city. And when we say everyone, we mean the people that have, the people that have not. And clearly, when we have a lot of redevelopment proposals, we need to follow what the state standard is for the amount of people and the amount of affordable housing that is offered. Now, Jason, because he had the position of being on the council for a couple months, he can expand on where maybe the ball had been dropped. One of the things that, um, so, again, serving on the administration that, that I saw was they sent uh, a former city manager to the county. The county had purchased a probation site down on River Street, and they were working with uh, the city, the county, and New Jersey Transit were working on a project. And this project was going to include some, some low-income housing um, and some veteran housing. Well, the, the, our former city manager made such a mess in his negotiations with the county, the county asked the city not to be part of the project. Now, as far as I know, it's still going to be built, but that would have been a tremendous project for the city to say, hey, even though we meet code regulations, because we do as, as the city of Hackensack, here's something else that we'd love to do. Um, you know, we, we couldn't work well with others, and, and unfortunately, it wasn't our project to be had. Um, I believe that project is still being built, but yes, we are looking to encourage, you know, with the new redevelopment that's going on, a, a, a percentage of one housing. Now, we're not there, we don't have the facts to see what can be done, but we want all the residents of Hackensack Tech to be comfortable with our administration. Great. Board of Education. Uh, there's quite a couple of questions here uh, with respect to that. Uh, first is the relationship between the City Council and the Board of Ed is very contentious. How do you plan to fix that? And, relatedly, the Board of Education and the City Council currently meet on the same day, and the asset residents don't have the opportunity to attend both meetings, what would you do to address that? Okay, I think I'll take this question. <laughs> um, as I mentioned in my introduction, I am the Vice President of the School Board, and I've been on the board for four years. The situation right now, or at least the last time we met, we had a team from the School Board to meet with the Council. The situation was there were there's five council members, and at the time we met over last summer, four of the five council members are conflicted out from talking to us. Two people because they work for the school, school system, one their spouse works for the school system, and at the time of the meeting, another their child worked for the school system. So when people say that we have a contentious relationship, at that point in time, we had no relationship because you can't meet with just one person to two people. So that was part of the reason why I decided I wanted to run. I don't have any family members that work for the Board of Ed Education, so if I get a seat at the table, I'm not conflicted out. Because I've been on the board for four years, I'm uniquely poised to know where we could start talking to the board. 
I think a combination of dialogue between the two entities is necessary. But there's a lot of shared services. The school board has playgrounds. The city has parks. You can do joint ventures as far as purchasing. Um, with the city, if you talk redevelopment, certain development programs, if you're working with a union, they have an apprenticeship program and they pledge 20% of the people on the jobs can go into an apprenticeship program. On the school board, we do a fabulous job of shaping curriculum, but it's not just Hackensack, it's everywhere. Once a kid graduates, if they're not ready for college, they don't have a lot of opportunities. They might go to the military or they might go and work at a local store. But what the council can do is, is they can take some of their redevelopment programs, they can work with the unions, and they can get children who are 18, 19, 20, and get them into one of these developments as part of an apprenticeship program. And in four years of apprenticeship, they learn skills that will last them for the rest of their life. So that is something that we have all talked about. We are humbled and honored to say that in discussing our plans for the city, we have received a number of endorsements, primarily because we are open to seeing how our residents could benefit. And again, your question was back to education, but I'm just saying that I think that's something that if you have a council that is willing to speak to a school system, you can hit the guidance counselors starting at 9th, 10th, and 11th and say, down the road, you have children that don't want to go into the military, don't want to go into the, don't want to go to college, let's have them go into the trades because we know that there are people there that want to get them taught skills that will last them a lifetime. And again, I think Jason was... Okay. I'm going to look into Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Another school-related topic. Uh, with the growth and development of the city with apartments, what is going to be done about the already overcrowded schools? Everybody like is... Let's grab that one. As, as, as I sat on the Main Street Alliance board and, and saw the projects that were coming in, one of the things that I noticed, having conversations with Lara and, and seeing what's going on in our school system, is before any redevelopment happened, we needed a new school anyway. I mean, it, it's, it's a fact. Our schools are overcrowded. Um, the, the redevelopment, you know, they, they claim that there's a small number of, of children that are coming in, but to me, that's irrelevant because we need our, our children are our future, and we need to make sure that they're taken care of and that their class sizes aren't growing in the way that they're growing. I just wanted to reiterate on that one. And we are in the schools, and we do see there are teachers that have you know, see 100 students a day, which is really ridiculous. So there definitely needs something to be done with that. <laughs> Uh, all I was going to say is, as a sitting board member, I am limited by what I can say on that subject. <laughs> uh, employment. What is your plan to train the youth of the city for employment opportunities? And will you sign an executive order to get more jobs in the city, redevelopment, as well as permits? I think that was asked and answered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say with uh, what Laura was talking about with the apprenticeship program, uh, if uh, we have, because the whole goal is behind the redevelopment is that if we can get a, like an apprenticeship program going, it'll be about training the youth or people that want to get involved. So then the work will be for people from Hackensack to work in Hackensack. And when they gain these skills after the five-year apprenticeship, then they can go on and go work anywhere else. And it's pretty much that's what uh, the goal. And they will be licensed. Yes. All right. Now we have a few questions concerning Hackensack University Medical Center. So I'll read all the questions. Yes. Uh, what is your position relative to Hackensack University? 
University Medical Center. Their continued expansion into the city and the tax breaks they receive. Uh, in prior years, an agreement between the city and the hospital to provide free ambulance service. What is your view on that? And sort of related to that, what can, what can you, what can the city do to help those that need medical coverage uh, or don't have good enough medical coverage? Okay. Okay. Well, first of all, let me, let me start, start off by saying that Hackettstack University Medical Center is one of the premier hospitals in our state, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have in the city of Hackettstack. But they need to pay their fair share. Uh, at, at the end of the day, you know, we are really covering the bill for this large organization that has a CEO that's making seven or eight figures. To me, that's that's not a non-profit profit organization. Um, you know, 20, in Bergen County, I believe 20 cities or and towns with hospitals in them have already sued to get the hospitals to pay their fair share. Now, I'm not saying we have to bring it to the courts, but what, I'm, what I am saying is they should be responsible to help the taxpayers take care of our great city. As far as the ambulance goes, it was part of a former uh, redevelopment deal that we had with the hospital. Um, and, and, I, and I absolutely believe that they need to help. There are people in our city that can't afford those rides. There are people that are in our city that can't afford the health care. And they take up a large area of our city. And they do some great things, but they need to help the people that are here. And I'm sure, through conversations with them and, and negotiation, that they're going to be willing to do so moving forward. Uh, in real, uh, relationship to uh, uh, the uh, ambulance service, um, I spent eight years as a volunteer ambulance uh, EMT here in Habitat. So I understand, and we didn't charge, okay? We survived on a, a grant from the city and donations. Um, but we never charged anybody for taking them to the hospital or even bringing them home uh, for the holidays. Um, I spoke about this, I, I spoke on this to Jason uh, not too long ago. Uh, the hospital, I mean the hospital took over the ambulance service uh, because of an agreement between them and the city. Several agreements in fact that took place over the past four years. Um, most of which cost the city a lot of money. Now if the hospital want to treat us this way, we have to give back. They have to give back I should say. And my proposal to them once we get in, uh, if you want to charge, fine. But if they, but, but if they're Hackensack residents, they should not be charged. You're taking up a lot of space. Uh, you, you're using uh, a lot of our services around here, and you're not paying your fair share of taxes. So, with that being said, our residents in the set in the city should be uh, uh, treated fairly by not being charged for transportation to the hospital after you just took over the service uh, that was at, originally free to them to begin with. So that's my position with that. Great, we have two more questions and then we'll have an opportunity for one of you to make a <coughs> one minute closing statement. We'll hop on the topic, and even in my town originally. Can you speak to the plan to discontinue leaf pickup from the street, instead of forcing residents to bag all of their leaves? <laughs> We have heard of the city's plan to um, make the residents bag their own leaves. Again, you know, if they if they provided the proper equipment to our wonderful sanitation department, I don't think this would be an issue. But it, it can t their their dislike and um, treatment, I guess, mistreatment of our sanitation department is part of this. At the, at the end of the day, Hackensack has always been a city that relies on services. We have a great sanitation department who is happy to take care of our streets and, and keep things the way they are. And when we hopefully get into office, you will not be <coughs> responsible to pick up your leaves and leaves and back up. Yeah, because you have to remember too, I mean, you have senior citizens. They have, you know, how are they going to, I'm sorry, how are they going to, you know, bag their own leaves? That's ridiculous, it's absurd. I was just going to say the same thing that Romy said. When you think about a policy that requires somebody that's either of a certain age or physical limitation 
to be responsible not only for bagging their law, you know, um, their lawn debris, getting it out to a sidewalk, and then mandating the days of the week. It used to be even if you just got it out on a certain day, but they're saying it has to be within a certain period of time. That imposes somebody that's not physically challenged, but maybe between their work schedule and something else. You're basically saying people are going to have to hire landscapers if they can't physically do something. So it's an unnecessary burden on people that already have burdens. So there's no, to our mind, logical reason for it. And the last question has to do with the relationship between the government here in Hackensack and the public service. And a couple of questions related to that are, what will you do once in office to enhance the relationship between the city and its residents? And what new avenues would you propose to increase opportunities for public input, decision making, and civic involvement in general? Okay, um, so as I was saying before, um, when I first started you know, campaigning, I was you know, going door to door. Uh, when I, well, yeah, when I started campaigning, I started going door to door to everyone. And I was just trying to get their feedback and their input. And one of the things that I did tell them is that this is not the last time you're going to see me. I'm going to come back again. And, and I've gone to a couple of places twice. And um, what I hope to do once elected is that I would love to go back to all these, uh, all the areas that I've been knocking on doors and giving them my information, like an email address, my phone number. And I'm going to tell them, put me to work. You know, because the only way that I can do stuff is also if you help me out. You know, I'll, I'll never forget, there was one time that uh, President Barack Obama, he said, you know, if you want me to do something, you gotta make me do it. And what I hope to do is that I hope to reach out to everyone in the area and get feedback from you to find ways how we can make this town better. Because the only way we can make it better is one, getting your support, and then us working together to make sure that you guys, everyone here, is, is doing well. And, um, one of the other things that uh, I was uh, really thinking about was, you know, one of the things that I would tell people is the, the last council, they talked about uh, that they wanted to do like these ward meetings uh, in the, the first, like in the five wards that we have, and that was something that I, I didn't see them do. And I hope that if elected, with your support, that we can do something like that and actually go and start engaging with people in the different wards and trying to see what their questions or their concerns are and how we can make the city a better place. And, it, it's, and the only way we can do that is if we work together. You know, I can go to you, you tell me what your ideas are, and then we'll run with it and we'll see what we can do to make it better. Ladies and gentlemen, the, my take on everything, and it's only my opinion, is the current city council, they talk at you. And um, I actually met one of the city council members in ShopRite, the local ShopRite. Um, and we had a discussion. And I said, my thing was, you hear, but you don't listen. That's the thing. These are the residents of Hackensack. You need to listen to them. Not just yes them and talk at them. So that, that's my opinion. When we first came together, I knew of Jason. Um, I knew Roni from uh, being in the uh, uh, um, Fairmont School. Um, I didn't know Lara and I didn't know Carlos. But as time went on with our campaign, I got to know that there's no question in my mind without fear of contradiction that we listen to people. We love listening to people, okay? We can't fix it unless you tell us it's broken. In some cases, uh, we need to know what's on your mind, so we know, need to, so we know what direction to go in. This this campaign isn't about us. This campaign is about the residents of this of this great city. And in the next four years, we're not going to forget that we're elected. 